I've had to put the solar system in my head actually in the last 15 20 years to do this um, and we just delivered an asteroid retrieval mission designed to NASA that will encapsulate a thousand ton object in a gas bag and de-spin it and bring it to lunar orbit so we can sample it to find out how the goodies that were falling into the earth <laughs> at four billion years ago that made us and at the same time my other way out science is, is uh, origin of life and where we're building a machine called a Genesis engine we're in the design phase which will run a trillion chemical experiments at once driven by supercomputers to do Google searches through chemical space and so as we're searching chemical space in the 20 teens and the 2020s and into the 2030s I'm hoping to keep NASA spinning or a billionaire or two here maybe on the playa to get our asteroid so we can get the material down to earth that was raining down in the warm little ponds and put it into our engine and our engine will run with the original material that made us and we may see a second genesis so wouldn't that be a nice little thing but in order to do that kind of work <laughs> I have to push my mind to new new spaces and for the longest time I thought you know all those drug users you know I was growing up in the 70s and we were given horror films in school probably Daniel was too in New York about you know the losers that got into the the wondrous world of psychedelics in the 60s and how they're all losers and how you should stay away and things like this and I, I kind of paid no attention to that and I just was nerding out on code in the 80s you know code was the new psychedelics you know for us guys and we were in these artificial worlds of code and some of the code that I wrote were virtual worlds with avatars you know these you know it's old hat now but it was exciting in the 90s where people are embodied by you're a cat you know it's like a big burning man in cyberspace the avatar worlds of, of the mid 90s and one day in one of these worlds appeared the avatar of Terence McKenna and it was a recording of Terence McKenna being played through an avatar head that was talking and I thought this is either the strangest guy that I've ever heard or the most interesting guy <laughs> that I've ever heard and I said I want to meet this guy so we met and we started working together and I said you know this guy is not a loser you know this guy's got a very intact mind and so we made a collaboration and I said okay I'll turn you on to virtual worlds if you come to my farm and I'll plunk you down in front of the largest CRT screen that I've got for best immersion turned him on for several hours and then he turned me on to his worlds but up until that point I'd always done tripping I call it endogenous or endo tripping you know you did this as a little kid when you you know you went into your imagination right you you had vivid worlds at one time we all did I never stopped that because I was so bored at school and I I look through my notebooks and instead of taking notes in math class or history class it's full of drawings of cityscapes and planets and layered you know layer upon layer because in those days I could look at those drawings and I could remember everything that was taught for three months by looking at one page so in a sense I was sort of already doing this work so Terence introduced me to his his worlds you know the mushroom world but I remember at the beginning just before I entered you know for the very first time this space I, I quickly put up a firewall between my endogenous journeying space and what was to come and I didn't know what was to come and that firewall I kept that up for 12 years to protect the endo space which I still use on a daily basis and it was running in parallel and just recently in in October last in Peru I took the firewall down and now I'm running endo and psycho in the same space with very very low doses of the psychedelics I can build uh, the trips from endogenous basically DMT I can ram my DMT production higher and higher now and I think that that sort of calls to maybe where the future of this movement could go in that you you know 
it's not really like Alan Watts saying when you've, you've got the message, hang up the phone. No, that's wrong. When you've got the message, you know, on the, on the answering machine or in, you turn on the TV, you know, and you go further. Uh, so you keep exploring. It's a huge space. But ultimately, if you feel, you know, your mundane life is going along until you can get to the playa and get turned on somehow, and then now you're in the magic world, you're, you're using a crutch. You're, you're privileging the substance. You can be in this magic world whenever you want. And I think moving the psychedelic opens you to the country. You know, Terence used to talk about it, it shows you the territory. He did not believe you could get there on the Natch. You can get there on the Natch. And when you do that, what I'm finding now is I'm doing stronger and stronger endo trips. I don't get trashed. I hit peaks that I, I really can't hit with a psychedelic because the psychedelic is overdriving constantly and pulling you in and out. Endo is your own, your own juices. You hit that peak and you come up. I was surprised the first time I did this and I, I was coming, coming off of it and I, I still got capacity. I can still do more journeying. I'm not, I'm not wrecked by this stuff. So that's, so what I'm now doing, because I've got this whole bunch of TV screens and bunch of things working, is I'm presenting science problems. So in uh, Peru a week ago, uh, with Dennis McKenna, we had a beautiful ceremonies up in the Andes. And uh, as I was coming into the sweet space where you can see the madre, she's not got her hands all over you and is, she's not putting you through the, the wash dry cycle. You're, you've got some separation. You can start having a conversation and a dialogue with this entity, this cybo, cybo ener, chemo energetic entity. And I used to say, hey, madre, take a look at my science problem that I've been doing through endogenous vision. And the science problem was how did life begin? And you know, mil billions and billions of little containers flowing off the side of a bathtub ring surrounding a hot spring four billion years ago. And, and this geyser in the distance pumping, 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 you know, like a, a wonderful ejaculation going on on a regular basis. And this cycle, this is what I saw on an endo trip, a three hour endo trip six years ago. We'd worked out the science. And but I said to the Madre, that this is a good example of a combination of endo and, and psycho. I said to the Madre, where is spirit? Is this just a machine that made us? You know, because I'm, I'm a little reductionist kid. I'm a sort of Descartian kid, but I'd like to believe there's more. And this calls back to what Daniel was saying about sort of the merger of the spirit world and magic and science and reductionism. There is there is a merger and it's I'll, I'll give an example of this this one merger point. So I said, Madre, take a look. And I ran my endo trip again inside the psychedelic trip, inside the ayahuasca trip, and the things are pouring around, and I'm running it and running it and running it. And the Madre says, okay, what, what, kid, watch. I'm t I'll turn it on the side. I'm removing space. You, you're, there's no space anymore. Your little bubbles are now all in one place and they're going in and out, pop, 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 pop. And I watched and it's like, oh my God, holy shit. You know, these things, trillions of them coming and going and coming and going and they're depositing, they're giving up their contents. Functional polymers are being dumped into this common pool and then picked up by other ones and then dumped and then come. And it's like, oh my God. And she said, and I said, because I asked the question, where is spirit in this mechanical machine that made life? It, there has to be something. She said, what are you seeing? And I said, I'm seeing sharing going on. Sharing is going on of, of these gifts, of, of these innovations, little strips of protein and RNAs and stuff like that. And then she said, uh, she said, what do, you, what do you call that? And I said, well, I call that community. And she said, that is spirit. And I went, <gasps> And I sat up and I looked around the room with, of our group and I thought, it's still the same. We're all here, we're humans, we're giving, like here on the playa, you're giving your gift economy gifts, you're giving your art, you're giving, it's all community. This is what spirit is. It was there at the beginning of life. And then she said something interesting, she said, you monkeys have got the whole thing backwards. 
I said, well, what do you mean? And she said, this whole Darwinian natural selection thing, you're looking at it backwards. I said, well, give me an example. She said, you think it's the survival of the fittest. No, it's the ones that sacrifice, the ones that are sacrificed that give up their contents to the community for the betterment, for the, the better tool, the better innovation, the better energy system that is driving it. It's not this fittest thing. It's not the one that sort of does it that way. And I was like, oh, you know, in one fell swoop, you merge reductionist chemistry with spirit and you come up with a whole flip of how we should look at our civilization in one fell swoop. So this work works. So I think that's by way of introduction of what I do. Thank you.